Hey guys, today we're going to be installing a Minkota Precision Charger MK460PC. Some of the notations, the four means it's four bank, and the 60 means it has a total of 60 amps output, which if you divide 60 by four, you're gonna get 15 amp output per bank. Since this is a 36 volt system in this boat, we're gonna have three batteries running that trolling motor power supply. Three of these banks will be dedicated to the trolling motor batteries. The fourth bank, we're gonna extend and hook that up to our starting battery. So when this boat is at idle in the garage, plugged in to shore power, all our batteries are being maintained, kept fully charged when not in use. The precision chargers are a little bit uh, out of the ordinary in that they're gonna monitor the state of your batteries. When they are plugged in, they'll continually charge the battery until the battery reaches a full charge. At that point, the charger will shut itself down and monitor the battery so when it does need a hit, it'll automatically turn on and continue to keep that battery at full charge. The advantage of having a PC chargers is you're gonna get more life and more longevity out of your batteries. A lot of these chargers have a metal plate on it. Anytime you have a charger with a metal plate on it and you're fastening it to an aluminum bolt, you're gonna to wanna to isolate that with something. I tend to use a, a transducer board and I split it in half and I'll drill some holes and I'll, I'll countersink them. So when you fasten this to the boat, this is below the surface of the transducer plate. Once those are mounted down into the base of the boat, we can then screw the charger, the charger to our transducer plate. So there's no contact metal to metal in the boat. And that prevents any issues that might occur with electrolysis between the boat and the water if the boat happens to be in the water tied to a dock and plugged to shore power. Because we need to create 36 volts, we're gonna hook these up in series. And, and we'll go through that once we get our jumper wires and stuff built up. But um, we're gonna go ahead and drop these batteries in and hook up our uh, precision charger and program it to have the proper output for the charge cycle for each uh, individual battery that we're installing. So we have our three batteries and kind of as a rule of thumb and it's no, uh, there's no set method to do it, but I typically number my batteries I start in the upper right and I go clockwise. So we'll call this battery number one, two, and three. So battery number one is gonna be our trolling motor battery negative. Here's our black lead going up to the bow. That's gonna go on battery number one negative. At the same time, we can hook up one of the leads from our onboard precision charger. The black wire will go on that same terminal. Battery number one positive now has to be hooked up to battery number two negative. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And like I said, we pre-made jumper wires. This is the same wire here and you'll note that the one we're hooking to battery one positive is red and the one that we're going to hook to battery two negative, I put a piece of black tape on so I know which terminal to hook it to. So we're now working on hooking up our series power supply, ultimately getting to 36 volts as an end result. So there's my jumper wire from battery one positive to battery two negative, which is on the left side here. Okay, and again, at the same time, we can hook our charger lead negative to battery number two. So we have a four bank charger in this boat. We only have three batteries up here. The reason being is we have three batteries charging, three wires coming out of our precision charger going to our three trolling motor batteries and the fourth lead coming out of that charger we extended back to the back of the boat to our starting battery to catch that and charge that as well. So now we have trolling motor battery number one positive hooked to battery number two negative with our charging cord. Now we're going to go battery number two positive to battery number three negative and again we pre-made our jumper wire. I have the the one end taped red. So we're gonna hook that up. Battery number two positive, along with our onboard charging red cable. Okay, so continuing with wiring in the series, battery number two positive is gonna go to battery number three 
negative. So we'll hook that up along with our charger lead, our black charger lead to the negative post. And last but not least, the positive terminal on our third battery is going to get the trolling motor power supply that has the circuit breaker attached to it. One thing to note on the circuit breaker, right now it's, the circuit breaker is closed or turned on. There's a little yellow lever here. If that's ever flipped out, that means there was a power issue and the circuit breaker tripped, which means it's now open. So. Uh, just a little tip, if for some reason you're out fishing and uh, you lost all power, first thing to check is that circuit breaker that's located off of your high side battery or our third battery positive. So we'll hook that up along with our charging lead. Now we just need, need to just snug everything down and then our trolling motor, 36 volt power supply, wired in series, is complete. Uh, now it's time to program this charger. There's different charge rates for different types of motors, which we mentioned earlier. Um, out of the box, the charger comes programmed for lead acid or flooded batteries. That's what we have in the boat, so we're not gonna change it. However, we'll show you how simple it is, if you did have an AGM or a glass mat, how simple it is to program that charger. So. Right on plugging it in, you press and hold the battery selector. Now you'll notice all three lit up, and now it's just going to cycle. So it's at AGM, then it's going to go to gel, flooded, and all three of them. And it'll continue to do that, and you just let the LED stop on the battery that you have in your boat. So we don't have an AGM. We don't have a gel, but we do have flooded. So we'll just let go at that. And now that charger is programmed to have the correct output, voltage output or charge cycle for a lead acid or a flooded battery. It's that simple. And it will remember it. So next time you're out, when you're done fishing and you plug your charger in, the charger knows that programming won't change. It'll continue to have the proper charge cycle for that lead acid battery. If you ever do change battery types, then you'd want to reprogram it so you do get the proper charge cycle for the battery that you have in your boat.